Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Time to answer some more Patreon questions. Got a couple of questions here from Jack Bud. The first one up here deals with how to make charts and stuff. And the second one down here deals with uh, how to do buttons. I think we'll deal with the button one first. Okay, so Jack's uh, second question, which is a small one, says, very small question here. I often find myself making overlay buttons on lists that take to another view, either a filtered version of the current list or an unfiltered version of the already filtered list. Back and forth. If you have done the same, what icon do you use to annotate all? The filter icon is a great choice to indicate, indicate a filter, but all still eludes me after a year of development in AppSheet. Uh, yeah, finding a good uh, action icon pairing is kind of a difficult thing to do, um, but there are a few kind of things that you can do. Uh, full disclosure, I don't really do the uh, link to filtered view thing. Generally, um, I find that the the reason you're using link to filtered view is because you're you're missing the like you're trying to get to a smaller list. Um, generally that list should be somewhere inside your database already. And so I don't need to link to filtered view to get that list. I just need to go look at the list somewhere, probably at the parent level where I can see everything else. Um, but, uh, to the action icon bit, right? So the thing that you could do, like the thing that I usually like to start with is the word stop, right? So like you could have this little, um, you know, the ban icon here, that's pretty good. You could do that that's, and make it make the uh, action red. I, well, I don't think you can make floating actions red, Never mind. Um, they can't accept color. But like you could do the ban and then put uh, like the, the text, because you know, when you hover over these, you get the, the display text. So you could make the display text, you know, return to whatever. Um, you could do the stop sign. You could do, you know, a, like a legit traffic light stop. Um, another thing you might do is, um, like if you try the word box, um, there's a few different options in here. So some of the things you might do is, uh, you could create this sort of, um, association in your user's minds where like I click the button and the first time and the button was just a, a single box. So that takes me to the single, the list of single things, kind of with me here. And then on that view, I've got a button with all the boxes. And so when I click that, it takes me to the view of all of, all of the stuff. Uh, in this actually, you could have a third layer in here. So I have a single, I have a box, I have a, a stack of boxes. Uh, and then if I do this inventory one down here, right, I have a shelf of boxes. So there's, there's things you could do, um, but, or, you know, you might try cancel, you know, yeah, that gets, you know, the same band type of thing, but, you know, maybe one of these little strikeout things, uh, the alert thing, maybe, I don't know. Um, you, maybe you could do, like if you did a line, where you've got, yeah, you know, you could do that and that and that, and that doesn't really pair up. Anyways, you see what I mean? Like there's, there are some pairings that you can do, but trying to find them is a little more difficult than just straightforward. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the second question from Jack is the, the deep one that I really want to get to here. Uh, says, all my ambitious goals of making cool charts and graphs uh, in all of my apps have been thrown to the wayside by the announcement that the new beta charts are no longer supported. I don't always need to make charts, but when I do, the beta charts added a slick way to visualize data. I find myself unable to make as effective charts as I could with the new charts. Uh, do you have better luck making charts and graphs that feel like they belong? Any tips? Uh, yeah, I have a couple. Yeah, so generally speaking, you're 100% right. The chart integration inside AppSheet is rough. Um, it's basically good for like 
basics. Like if you want a simple line chart, you want a simple bar chart, a simple pie chart, simple, like simple, right? You're not trying to do anything special. Like you don't want some kind of trend line and like don't even know, like just, you just want to see the line. That's it. Cool. That's the way to go. App sheet charts will work for you. But if you want to good, if you want to do anything outside of that, you kind of got to look elsewhere. Um, now, if you want to stay within app sheet charts, one of the things that's extremely helpful to do that maybe you're not thinking to do, because I forget to do this all the time. I have to remind myself to do this. Um, so you can create some, I don't know, rather decent looking charts inside your app. So like, this is actually pretty helpful. Um, there's nothing collected inside it right now, but this is a stacked chart. So you can see there's four things inside there, remaining items, collected items, remaining phases, collected phases. And the idea is it starts off with this orange bar for all of the things that are remaining for the phases and this red bar for all of the items that are remaining. And as I collect them, the, a green bar slowly works its way up right? So it starts off all red and then we have green that slowly works up till the red's gone. And then it works up as the phases are gone too. And eventually the whole thing will just be a giant green bar. But the, by using the app sheet chart integration like this, I'm able to get this nice little where I hover above it. And if you look, if you're kind of paying attention, you can kind of see the, the one I'm hovering above is a little lighter than all of the other ones. So it's highlighted. Um, but anyways, it gives you the ability there. Uh, I have them all like this so that you can see that. And then, you know, I can click on it and it takes me to the thing that I need to get to whatever. So, I mean, you can kind of do this. Um, the way that I made this work, right? The key to doing something like this is you have to have the numbers on the record. This is the thing that like, I'm always forgetting to do because it just seems like it's a bunch of extra crap on my columns, on my, in my virtual columns, that's just like, oh man, there's just a whole bunch of extra columns here. Um, but like, if I show you, so like this chart is of this, is of this, and if I just keep going back, so this is the table that this is from. And if I go all the way to the bottom, so the first thing that's a key, right, is you've gotta have, I don't know, like some, Thing that represent like either you got numbers or you have list of records. So in this case, the bar chart inside the system represents what's left to be collected. It's kind of like an inspection system. Um, so I have a whole bunch of fields here that show me like these are the remaining field reports. These these or, these orange guys up here. These are the remaining required items. That's these red guys right here. So I have a list. That's the list of the actual items. So like if I go here and I look at the record, like this is the remaining items is this virtual column right here. So it's a list of records, right? So it's a list of references to my to-do table. Um, but that doesn't work for charts. What I need for a chart is a number. So this is like the key thing you've got to do is like on my table here, if I go down to the bottom, you can see I've got these last little bits right here that say me, let me, let me shrink myself out of the way a little bit. I've got these last little columns down here that are just numbers and they're literally just counting the lists that I have up above. Count how many remaining field reports I have. Count how many related field reports. So these are the ones that were collected count how many remaining I count. It's just counting all of those lists that I already have on this parent, because the way I've built my system is on the parent level, I have a list of everything you need to do. And then when you do it, that list slowly whittles away till it's nothing. And so all I'm doing is I'm counting the remaining and I'm counting the collected so that I have a virtual column except one each that literally just holds the number, literally just holds the number. And then I hide it. Like, I don't need to see it anywhere. This is just system stuff in the back. Um, but you can see it's just the number type. And then when I go to my chart, now all of the sudden I can, uh, I can, I have all of these fields available for me to select because they're, they're number fields and your chart is looking for number fields. 
Um, so that's that's one way if you want to get if you want to stay within like the app sheet realm and kind of make things work, just throw some numbers, some virtual columns that hold the numbers for the record you're dealing with, and then you can use those inside your charts. Um, but if you really want to do like some advanced chart things, uh, you got to go outside AppSheet. And there's plenty of other services that are available that you can use inside AppSheet that work. The most prevalent one, the easiest one to use is called QuickChart. Um, I'll throw a link down below. Um, but it's a, um, it's, a, it's a free service that you can use. You can pay for it if you want to like, if you want to do higher, higher level things with it. Um, but I'll drop a link into this page right here. This chart service is amazing. Just take a look at some of these charts that you've got right here. Like you've got, look at these line charts. Look, look, look at this awesome guy here with all them little circles and everything. You can fill things below, fill things below, uh, above. You can smooth stuff out. You can stack things. You can do <laughs> bubble charts. Look at these pie charts, like this one with all of the little annotation things coming off to the side. Amazing. You can use this to make QR charts. I use these all the time. The gauge charts, the radio, uh, the radio guys, and the progress bars. Yo, wow. So easy. So easy. It's awesome. Uh, you've got, I just keep going. This is one of my favorite ones. The horizontal chart like this. A nice little Gantt timeline. Choice, mate. You just keep going. They just keep getting better. And like this one over here, like, look, like this is like, half shaded over here and we've got labels for each one of the data points so i know what they are this one's got you know it's a it's a candlestick thing you know i've got you can use images in the background look at this you can put little icons on here to make it look cool and everything now the real fun thing with this with this whole gallery thing is if you click on any one of these it takes you to the sandbox where it gives you this is all of the code that you need in order to run in order to generate this chart over here and literally so like you can just come inside here and start picking this apart and like so if you look inside here um, I've got this data set and if it, the format for all of this is JSON so like I know right this little curly bracket thing it's the start of an array so I'm, like, I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna put a comma here and I'm gonna do that and if we look over here, now we've got two lines for rainfall. But I'm going to change this one to, I don't know, flooding. And I'm going to make this red and red, right? Okay, so now we've got a flooding line. And like, I'll change this to like, I don't know, five, one, zero, 20, 25, whatever, right? But check it out. Now I've got a whole nother line included in my data set. And so the, the way that you modify your charts inside here is just adding or removing text inside this big thing. So however many data, however many lines I want to include, that's just one of these little data set sections, right? And so the thing you can do is inside your app, if I know that this is the type of chart that I wanna make, and I'm gonna use this service, uh, on my, so I have a parent level, and then I have a child level. On my child level, I'll have the child records generate each little bit of text like this to where all it does is it takes like, you know, the name of the record that we're dealing with and it's, it sticks it inside this label here and then whatever data point it has, it sticks it inside the data, right? So that it stores just this small little bit. And so then each of the child records now has each of this little bit inside it. And then the whole chart is just a collection of all of those little bits with some other stuff thrown on top of it. And that's how I got to this chart right here. So this is a, a chart that I've built for a sample app I'm building. And uh, it shows you a nice view of the inventory status at this particular location. It also shows you the various different, you know, sections, like we're in the green up here, the current stock. 
um, but I have on order plus minus 30. Hmm, we're taking some away. Um, and the final quantity is gonna be 20. So we're gonna be down here in the orange. So when that happens, I need to do something else. But anyways, so I generated this chart. Um, so the idea is that this is a location inventory. So I have a location inventory layer, right? So this is the parent layer. And then inside here, I've got this um, code builder right here that literally all I did was go here to the chart, to, to the sandbox and quick chart. I made my chart look how I wanted it. I came in here, I copied everything. I came into here and I dropped it in here. Then I started working on it to make it work. You know, I filled it in with a concatenate. I started checking all of my quote escapes to make sure that, you know, everything was, I didn't have any kind of mess, messiness going on there. I filled all of that in and then I ended, and anything that needed to be parameterized based on like the inventory's current count plus the sum of the locations, order details, on orders, quantity. So like whatever the current count is plus what we have on order, right? So this is a formula inside here, but the result of all of this is just something like this, where all it's just a giant text string with all of this inside it. And then all you do is you tell AppSheet to generate an image, you see down here, with this little quick chart, chart C equals, and then your little code, encode it uh, in code URL, your chart code and you make this an image, and AppSheet takes the URL that's produced and interprets it as an image, and that's what you get here. You can do a lot of amazing things with QuickChart. It's a fantastic thing. I'll put some links down below to the community that they have. There's a lot of really helpful stuff in there, um, and to that gallery where you can get into the sandbox and start playing with all of this. Um, so I hope it answered your questions. I bet you there's a billion more now. Let me know what they are down in the comments below. See you in the community, everybody.